now we will start with a very basic uh, categorization of or classification of machine learning algorithms as you can see here there are three different type of machine learning algorithms exists mostly one we call supervised learning the second one we will learn unsupervised learning and another one we call reinforcement learning and sometimes we also call semi-supervised learning okay so initially we will go through all these different type of learnings in a very brief way and then we will dive into each and every learning algorithms and their mathematical background in greater detail so let's start with supervised learning first what is written? Learning under the supervision of a teacher. What does it mean? You see, we all know what is the meaning of supervision. It means that we, are, we have some teacher for us who is basically instructing us that this is an example and this should be the output. Something like this. Right? So, it's something like what exactly we have seen in my previous examples for example for example we will start with some example form from a teacher what we can do we can definitely analyze the examples you see remember this is the set of steps that we actually follow in a supervised algorithm okay so we start with examples from some teacher we analyze the examples analyze the examples means we try to observe that uh, what is the pattern of the data and how uh, the data is distributed and then we basically try to learn the pattern in some form in some help by some help of some algorithm and at the end we solve similar type of problem as i told you that i have taught you with some particular mathematical chapter i have actually you you ex you, you have taken some examples from me like um some some uh, particular mathematical examples you analyzed those examples you tried to solve by yourself with the help of me i have told you i have maybe i have shown you that you have to uh, take this particular assumption or something like that and based on that your brain has been tuned to solve similar type of problem so as a result basically what you can solve any similar type of problem that already uh, we are going through right so as a result i'll come back to the you know the image again that we have this type of our uh, situation is something like this we are giving this training with supervision is there and then we are you know we are basically using that model to you know to uh, solve similar type of problems and for predicting something right so uh, this is already you have seen in some similar type of in in, uh, in previous uh, I mean uh, previous slide. So again, I will come back to here because this is a supervised learning training data. In previous case, I have not written this term supervised learning. I have written only training data. But now I will be a little more specific. And I will say this is supervised learning training data. The reason is that quite the supervision is so supervision is that you know what should be the level of this based in the example. It is given in the example that what should be the output. So assume that there is some teacher who is continuously teaching to the model that if you give this set of input, you should get this output. So what happening definitely at the beginning what you do for example you start solving a problem what happened you don't so you don't you, you don't able to solve every problem right what happened you do some mistakes you give do some errors and based on the mistake or the error basically you start learning that because of this these steps i have done i have went through this particular mistake right so what you learn that you should not go this path you should take another path right so starting from 
the point where you started solving the problem till the solution, you basically find lot of different paths and among all the paths, some paths will never reach you to solution, some paths will reach you to solution. So that tree is actually, it's tuned in your brain, which we call basically learning. So it happens with, you know, since we have some supervision, so it's called supervised learning, right? Now, we have two different type of supervised learning possible in, uh, you can say, uh, in, our, in our algorithm. One we call classification and another we call regression. Okay, there are some supervised learning problems present, which we call classification type of problem. And there are some supervised learning problem exist, which we call regression type of problem. Okay. So what is the difference between them? Let's do one thing. Let's go through some examples of classification type of problem and go through some examples of regression type of problem. Okay. And I hope you will, by yourself, you will be able to understand what is the difference. Let's see. Some classification example. What is given here? Machine learning model that can identify if a male as a spam or not spam. This is a very real life problem we, we basically use in, in, in every day. For example, mostly you use Gmail. You will see that there is a spam uh, box present in your Gmail. Some mail which is not useful for you automatically go to spam. So what happening? When someone is sending you mail in your particular email ID, there is some application running within Google server. Some model is there, some machine learning model, which model is trying to predict whether the mail that is sent to you is a spam or not spam. If it is spam, then automatically the mail redirected to the spam box. And if it is not spam, then only it come to your inbox, right? Similarly, another one, machine learning model that can recognize a digit. It's very, you know, it's also a very well-known situation, I mean, case that sometimes we all use in real life, that whether it's seven or eight or six or something like that, or maybe machine learning model that can classify a music as a rock or pop or folk music. So if you, if you, if you, uh, for example, uh, even you can see this one in Google also, if you try to search for some rock music, you will get only rock musics. If you try to find some folk music, you will get only folk music. So somehow, which particular music is rock and which particular music is folk, that is already classified within the Google server and based on that, you, you get the result, right? Now let's come to a examples of regression problem say you see the first one machine learning model that can predict limit of a credit in credit card it's also very well known because once you will start you know you know uh, you know earning money you will see based on your pan card okay based on your uh, you know uh, you know there is a credit a score we call credit score Different banks will call you and will ask you that do you want to take credit card for my bank or something like that. So basically, what uh, that means there is some definitely models who is basically trying to predict. For example, assume that you are from a banker side, you work in some particular bank. So you have a model over there which basically taking inputs of different people, the inputs is coming as say, for example, they are uh, bank account limit. Okay, I mean, the, the different, the, the amount they have in their bank or different investment, or uh, maybe the history of their job or something like that. How, what is the age of the person? And based on that, that particular model is giving you a prediction that you can request this particular customer to take credit card from you. Okay, it can be a situation. Uh, so the 
you, you must, sorry not a credit card you 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 can request this amount of credit to you okay say 5 lakh or 2 lakh or something like that similarly another is predict the profit in next month in a company it's very important for any company because company want to know what should be the growth in future based on past history right so uh, this is also important Another can be a model that can predict average temperature in next month. This is extremely useful for all of us because we all try to get an idea about the weather maybe in seven days or maybe in the next month or something like that, right? Now, if you closely uh, go through the examples of the classification problem and regression problem given here, one very important difference you can observe is that the output of regression problems are not discrete it is continuous for example i'm saying that i i'm saying for the first case you, the model can predict the limit of a credit the limit of a credit in some particular value it can be 2000 rupees or maybe 2050 rupees or maybe 2051 rupees till any amount till crore whatever doesn't matter but it is a continuous value similarly the profit of a company in next month the profit will be in some dollars or something like that the dollar is also a continuous value but if you check the classification problems the examples that i have written here you see it's totally discrete means you have a mail you are predicting the whether the mail is spam or not spam there is no way to give any answer beyond that either the mail will be spam or the mail will be not spam both spam and not spam is not possible and the mail is is uh, not spam even i mean i mean both not it is also not possible similarly recognition of a digit either digit will be 1 or 2 or 3 till 9 uh, sorry i mean from 0 till 9 any one of them it is not possible that a digit will be 0 and 1 both not possible similarly either a music will be rock or a pop or a folk so there is no proper continuous discrimination between these examples and this is what a difference between a classification and regression problem is in case of classification problem you will see the examples that we will have the level of the examples will be in discrete form something like this yes or no or maybe uh, rock pop or folk something like this okay but in case of regression problem we will see the level that we will find will be in will be in continuous value for example some in form of say salary or maybe in form of some you know some profit margin in the next month or maybe some credit limit whatever or maybe temperature doesn't matter anything is in continuous value right so this is a very important difference between classification and regression now <clears throat> let's see one more uh, you know difference between classification and regression you know in a in a different way so let's take uh, an idea between these two so what we have seen we have seen three examples in my previous slide, right? What it is doing? Predict an answer between two or more distinct answers. This distinct answer are clock classes. And that is why the name as classification. Okay. For example, as I have written here, that based on some temperature or humidity or in the month, maybe there is a data set that if the temperature was 38 degree, there was a 90% humidity and month was July, then there is a possibility to be rain. Or there is one more example, if the temperature is 20 degree, humidity is 48% and month is October, there was no rain. In this way, you can have multiple examples and based on that, you can prepare a machine learning model which can predict whether there will be a rain or not based on these three features temperature humidity and month right now see here what we have seen in previous example like here also you can see rain is yes or no it is giving 
either of these two right or in previous example you have seen mail is spam or not spam so either of these two or maybe you have seen the music is rock pop or folk so either of these three that means depends on class number of class exist in the data set we divide the classification problem into two part one we call binary classification binary means two that means for all those cases all those classification problems where the discrete the discrete levels are two only two discrete levels then we call that as a binary classification problem now uh, and in case of multi in case of other classes like obviously one class is not possible in case of three class four i mean the number of discrete value can be different like can be three even can be four also right so for all those cases we call it as multi-class classification problem okay similarly if i go for a regression what it is saying that it's a statistical method to estimate the strength of a relationship between a dependent and one or more independent variable what does it mean just see the examples present in the right hand side a similar example already you have seen in previous slide okay that is the carpet area based on some carpet area number of bedroom and year of construction i have idea of what should be the house price so this based on these three input we have some output similarly we have other examples as well and what actually regression problem try to find out the relationship between these features and the output that, that is what is written here okay so this is a very uh, you know basic difference or you can say a, in a very brief idea about what a classification and a regression is now what we will do we will go through the regression category different type of regression problem and you know let's do one thing let's complete this we have some category of regression also that is there are three different type of regression one we call linear regression and another we call logistic regression and then we call polynomial regression linear regression means we have a linear relationship between the input and output as simple as that that's why linear so we can easily draw, draw a straight line and that straight line will represent the relationship between input and output now naturally it will, it will come in our mind that how a straight line can do that we will learn that we will understand try to understand that definitely and i hope then this linear regression will be you know you know very clear to you so let's go through step by step and then uh, we will start anyway let's now see what is logistic regression there is a specific function for this we call logistic function that is also we will learn okay so but remember this log although we write logistic regression as a regression but it is not really used in regression problem you will see that this logistic regression is used for classification problem now why i'm saying this when we will go through this logistic regression in more detail then we will understand very easily you will understand very easily that why this logistic regression is finally basically useful for classification problems okay and similarly another way and the third one is polynomial regression so what polynomial obviously you can easily understand polynomial we all know means poly means there are multiple factors not only one so multiple factors is there so naturally the equation cannot be linear it can be a curve right so something like in previous example you have seen there are dots lot of dots and the dots if you make try to make a pattern you cannot create a straight line for that you have to go for some equation which represents the curve because the pattern of the dots was in a curve form right so definitely in that case we have to go for polynomial regression so this is a very you know basic idea about what a classification and regression is now let's do one thing let's start how a 
unsupervised learning loops.